Thank friends, Professor Bramsing Horticulture Foundation, BSHF, a not-for-profit organization and myself, welcome you all to the talk number 7 of this series named as 4-H, Urban Horticulture for Health and Happiness. BSHF is thankful to Bayer Semenis to sponsor this webinar series. I welcome co-organizers Dr. Peetam Kalia, ICR Rafi Ahmed Kidwai Awardee and former head Division of Vegetable Science, ICR IARI New Delhi and Dr. Shalend Rajan, former director ICR CITH Lucknow. The talk this evening is on Ayurved Pro Green Hydroponics Technology for Growing Sprouts and Microgreens for Health and Happiness by Dr. Deepti Rai, who is Principal Scientist, Hydroponic Applications at Ayurved Research Foundation, Delhi. We welcome Dr. Deepti Rai and wish her and all other women a happy Women's Day. Thank you, sir. Thanks to Dr. Deepti Rai who honored our request to speak on International Women's Day that is March 8 today. <clears throat> Friends, Sprouts and greens are gradually becoming part of our diet or food plate. Importance of sprouts and microgreens in our daily diet is becoming visible or discernible by their presence in important vegetable shops, hotels, restaurants. The prominence of nutrients in sprouts and microgreens, how to grow them at home as well as at commercial scale for entrepreneurship and contribution of Ayurved Research Foundation to promote these sprouts and microgreens are some of the aspects Dr. Deepti Rai is going to highlight this evening. Microgreens production is similar to soilless vegetable or flower nursery production. This will be discussed with details. Question can be raised in chat box or comment which would be attended after the talk. Now I request Dr. Pitam Kalia to introduce the speaker. Dr. Kalia ji. Yeah, thank you, sir. Good evening. A most respected uh, Professor Brahm Singh ji, founder of uh, BSHF and uh, coordinator uh, Dr. Shailendra Rajan ji, and uh, today's uh, speaker, none else than Dr. Deepti Rai, who is uh, a technical commercial person with uh, 20 years of diverse experience in interdisciplinary research and development, and would be talking on Ayurved Pro Green Hydroponic Technology for Growing Sprouts and Microgreens for Health and Happiness, which is very futuristic subject and uh, becoming dear to every person today who are looking for better health. Dr. Rai qualified uh, uh, with the doctorate from G.B. Pant University of Agriculture and Technology, working as uh, Ayurved Research Foundation, which was formerly known as Davar Ayurved at uh, uh, Ghaziabad as a principal scientist of uh, hydroponics and is coordinating uh, for collaborative research projects with the 
SAUs and ICR institutions through MOUs. Dr. Rai is working on hydroponics technology and its application for the last more than 15 years. Her major concerned areas are production of green fodder, raising crop nurseries and production of wheat grass. And she has applied for six patents based on the research she has carried on during all these years and several research papers on behalf of organization that she has published. She has also demonstrated the application of hydroponics technology at international level, like in Dubai, and also at Central Agriculture University in Imphal, Squast Jammu, PAU Ludhiana, and for farmers on farmers' fields at Sonipat, Dr. Rai is the principal investigator of uh, various government-funded research projects like from DST, DBT, NMPV, and NABARD. And uh, she is uh, mainly aiming towards farmers' welfare, technology promotion, development, and dissemination. She is associated with the prestigious government uh, uh, ENAM program as a quality expert through Ernest and Young. Dr. Deepati Rai uh, work on soilless technology uh, has been awarded uh, with the national and international level awards like that of uh, Terry, Quality Council of India and uh, Golden Peacock Innovation. She is uh, quite uh, uh, active and uh, looking forward for futuristic type of technologies like uh, the hydroponics which uh, is anticipated to be everybody's technology tomorrow uh, therefore uh, she is herself uh, seems to be quite a good entrepreneur and uh, therefore we would be interested to listen her on uh, her very dear topic on sprouts and microgreens growing in hydroponics uh, therefore, I would not take much time as uh, the viewers must be looking forward to hear her on her uh, most beloved uh, topic. Therefore, I invite uh, Dr. Rai to take the floor and go ahead. Thank you, sir. Is my screen visible? Yep. Yes. Okay, okay sir. So, uh, good evening, everyone. And at the outset, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to speak in this prestigious webinar series. And a special uh, thanks to Professor Brahma Singh for giving this opportunity on International Women's Day, sir. Uh, today's topic is very interesting. That is... Ayurved Pro Green Hydroponics Technology for Growing Sprouts and Microgreen for Health and Happiness. After COVID, everyone is concerned about health and immunity. So, immunity is the uh, new buzzword, we can say. So, how sprouts and microgreens grown through hydroponics technologies are beneficial for us, that I will cover in coming slides. The content of the presentation is like, uh, I will briefly introduce my organization. What is the need of hydroponics global and international uh, contest? Hydroponics technology and what is exactly the hybrid pro green hydroponics technology, which is abbreviated as APH technology. Then application of APH in raising sprouts and microgreens. What are the benefits of hydroponic sprouts and microgreens in health and happiness? Possibility or marker, market opportunity for uh, these microgreen and sprouts. And utilization of APH in raising horticulture nurseries. Then I will, lastly, I will tell the application of APH in other crops also, which we are working for a last 15 years. So just a brief of the organization. We have started in 1992 as 
डाबर आयोरेट आयुर स्टैंड फॉर लाइफ एंड वेट स्टैंड फॉर एनिमल हेल्थ सो इट इज आयुर्वेट नॉट आयुर्वेदा विच जनरली पीपल कंफ्यूज एंड इन टू थाउजेंड फाइव आयुर्वेद रिसर्च फाउंडेशन केम इन टू एग्जिस्टेंस बिकॉज वी आर नॉट ओनली कंसर्न अबाउट एनिमल्स बट इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ लाइफ स्टॉक एंड एग्रीकल्चर फॉर सस्टेनेबिलिटी इज इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड दैट इज अवर मंत्रा फॉर वर्किंग टूवर्ड्स द सस्टेनेबिलिटी बाय इंटीग्रेटिंग दीज टू इम्पॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट so uh, we are working for one health the concept of one health says that animal health environment health people health all are related all are in, interconnected and lastly the environment is health is affecting all of us so uh, the concept of one health we are working towards for last 15 years uh, towards this one health concept other than this our areas of interventions are like animal health and nutrition medicinal plant for conservation and multiplication and we also buy back medicinal plants test house is there for food and feed safety ways to wealth crop residue management a stubble burning is the issue where every uh, the person in ncr is affected skill and entrepreneurship development rural development soil and water testing so these are the interventions of ayurved research foundation now the question comes why there is a need of hydroponics technology or soilless technology in global context if we see, uh, see so uh, the report of ipcc says that 25 24% of total greenhouse gas emission is through agriculture and uh, the animal uh, farming or animals contributes 14.5% of total greenhouse gases emissions so the uh, both component are important and they are contributing towards total greenhouse gases emissions so there is a need of technology which are environment friendly and which can help in reducing the total uh, greenhouse gases emissions second thing and very important is the global contamination of the soil if you see the map which i have shown here uh, it is a fao fao map which says that 26 to 30% global death attributes to the environment and soil contamination is directly linked to human health and it is impacting human health in all over the globe so it's a matter of concern because our soils are contaminated second is, third is the global water stress if you see the map where uh, i have tried to depict the global water stress where most of the countries are in orange or red zone the severity is moderate to high so these are some concerns basic and population population is increasing day by day so in global context you can say that these are the four issues which has uh, given the basis for need of hydroponics technology at global level in context of india all of us know we are 140 crore so rapid population growth is there and the land area which all of us know is only 1.08 hectare the so, uh, shrinking arable land is there and 54% of india is facing high to extreme water stress so what is scarcity is there so we need to develop technologies which are not only farmer friendly but it uh, environment friendly but it can save the precious resources of water so that is why soilless agriculture technology needs to be developed hydroponics as uh all of no it is a science of growing plant without the use of soil it's a greek word hydro means water and ponic means working so uh, this is all our photographs where we have raised paddy nursery green fodder and uh, nursery of mint and uh, we know that the physiological requirement of plant can be met without the use of soil 
and plants are rooted and thus supported in an in, in, inert media and the nutrition is provided through water soluble uh, minerals uh, hence it is disease free uh, i am just introducing the technology ayurved pro green hydroponics machines or technology you can see uh, the external view of hydroponics machine and as well as the internal view of hydroponics machine we claim to be one of the pioneer in india for uh, developing this te technology applied for patent which has been granted on the machine and we also applied four more patents on different nutrient solution crop specific nutrient solutions uh, uh, for uh, uh, patents and 2006 we have started as in giving to solution to our dairy farmers uh, who don't have the excess of year round green fodder to be given to their animals so we have started with green fodder but now the technology has diversified and it has it has been applied in other areas also uh, these are some of the models of Ayurved Pro Green Hydroponics machines where the capacity started from 40 kg per day to 2000 kg per day. And we do have different models. Rural model is also there and automatic models is also there. So APH40 is the smallest machine which harvests only 5 trays per day. Now the concern of hydroponics for safe food production because everyone is now concerned about health and immunity and they want contamination, pesticide free, heavy metal free produce which can be a, poss which can be a possibility through soilless agriculture and it all links to the soil. Other than this, what it is a water conservation technology. If I take an example of tomato, 1 kg of tomato requires around 400 liters of water and through hydroponics it can be possible only from 25 liters. Now the topic has been given to me is the application of hydroponics technology in growing microgreens and sprouts. So we have applied this technology, our Ayurved Pro Green Hydroponics technology in growing microgreens and sprouts. So the basic, very basic difference of sprouts and microgreen is that sprouts is only for three to five days. It doesn't need any uh, light, but microgreens have two leaves and it needs light. And the time is required is around seven to 14 days. And if it grows further, then it, it called baby green and then adult green. So uh, in uh, sprouts, you have to eat entirely uh, with along with the root. And in microgreens, only uh, leaves are being ate, eaten. Uh, this is an example of our machine where we have grown sprouts at one of our client sites where five uh, crops has been taken sunflower gram flax soybean and moon bean we have kept the temperature around 20 degrees centigrade humidity is kept at 70 to 80 percent and the standard which we have followed that very simple standards like clean seed should be used and before putting the seeds to the machine germination tests should be done because they are prone to molds and fungus so a uh, germination test is required food grade tray should be used and water should be portable water so you can after harvesting this you can claim that it is heavy metal free and pesticide free and safe in nature but before selling it to the uh, customer you need a license of fssai which is required and for a small entrepreneur or an entrepreneur the cost is not very high only registration is required which costs around 200 to 300 rupees uh, we have tried to find the economics of growing sprouts uh, through this ayurved pro green hydroponics machine 
and uh, the input cost which i have taken on the higher side you can uh, uh, see that it is around 1500 rupees per day the operating cost and if you uh, take the capacity of 10 kg sprouts per day only then also the profit will be around 1500 to 2000 rupees per day so an entrepreneur can start his uh, microgreen business or sprout business by taking this machine because it is hygienic, pesticide free, safe and you can take the license on the basis of your growing condition through FSSAI. Uh, this is some of the uh, certificate or you can say the credibility of Ayurvedic Pro Green Hydroponics Machines. Like this is the first machine to get commercial test report from Ministry of Agriculture, Government of India. This is the certificate of the first patent which we got, which we have uh, received on hydroponics and uh, recognition from ERI, where uh, hydroponic rice paddy nursery uh, article was published. Now the question comes, uh, why to involve sprouts in our diet we know it uh, from ages that it is a good source of uh, amino acid pectins and sugars aids in digestion it is good for immunity also aids in weight management protect against cancer improve blood circulation and in one of our uh, research paper i got that it is a high content uh, it has high content of polyphenols high antioxidants are there because it's a growing thing and ascorbic acid is also on a higher side so uh, we should uh, take sprouts also for health and happiness it is a no now it is considered as a novel functional food and it can be given to the uh, children also uh, regarding microgreens, it's slightly different because it contains leaves and the uh, harvesting time increases. It also contains very, uh, some report says uh, that the science behind microgreen is that it contains 4 to 40 times more nutrition than mature vegetables. It is the new super food because it is rich in potassium, zinc, copper, iron and uh, five times level of vitamins is increased in comparison to their mature plants or counter uh, parts and the recommended quantity which i could get is only 25 gram per day not much quantity is required and uh, it promotes he heart health keep blood sugar level in check may lower cancer risk these are the some findings which i could get from the research paper on science behind microbe and the next question big question is how to use it uh, traditionally it is used in raw form to garnish uh, pizzas omelets pasta burgers sandwiches and salads but we are indians in indian cuisines they can be sprinkled in chole pav bhaji dhokla chaats etc and you are, if you are a uh, healthy drink, uh, want to take healthy drink, then you can juice up for a healthy drink with ginger also. Another microgreen uh, effect which I could get from the research paper is that it supports brain functions. It is high in mineral salts that are involved with neurotransmitter chemical production. It can pull toxic heavy metals from the brains help rejuvenate and strengthen neurons which ultimately help the body in reversing diseases like demen dementia brain fog uh, uh, alzheimer memory memory loss and sprouts and microgreen both are phytoestrogenic and critical for rebalancing and restoring hormone like progesterone estrogen and tester, uh, testosterone and very important uh, sprout or uh, microgreen is methi where may fenugreek sprouts are especially helpful for balancing the cortic cortisol production and regulating thyroid 
hormone production so people uh, who are suffering from from thyroid can take fenugreek or methi microgreens uh, regularly now the question comes is there any market of microgreens yes at global level the market size is big it is 1276 million us dollar and expected to reach 2049 million us dollars by 2028 increasing by the rate of 11% and the largest market share is from uh, is usa canada and Mex mexico they are uh, mexico they are the bigger um, biggest player and some of the company mostly from usa i could get uh, like farm box greens aero farms chefs green uh, garden good leaf these are the some of the major players in uh, microgreens regarding our country india it's still a emerging market and there are very few players still in india like some entrepreneurs i could get to talk to them in delhi chennai and mumbai two companies has mentioned that they are supplying microgreens that is true leaf in gurugram and living food in bangalore and price range which i could get is rupees 80 to 120 per 100 gram this is the average price i got from different sources and if you talk about global level demand so broccoli is number 1 followed by let lettuce and basil india preferred the colored microgreens basically beetroot methi mustard coriander radish and colored cabbage if you compare sprout versus microgreen as novel functional food both are very beneficial sprouts are better source of antioxidant pectins and sugar while microgreens contains high content of carotenoids and organic acid without any sugar so uh, it it exhibit higher antibiotic properties than sprouts and the basic difference which i have earlier mentioned that microgreens have true leaves and it needs light uh, and sprouts do not have leaves and do not need lights so we can add microgreens or sprouts both as per our uh, choice these are some of the um, recommended microgreens which i have uh, searched so the microgreens demand of colored cabbage coriander and pur purple radish is very high followed by broccoli alfalfa alfa, beetroot methi and mustard and uh, in left you can see that the cabbage microgreens contains 40 times more vitamin e then the count uh, it's a uh, mature red cabbage and uh, vitamin c is six times higher while in coriander you can see four is to one is the ratio of beta carotene four times more uh, beta carotene is available in microgreens of the coriander so we should adopt this mighty microgreens other than this microgreens we have also applied this technology ayurved pro green hydroponics to raise the nurseries of horticulture crops where the system is little bit modified and we have used the combination of red and blue, blue light at certain interval to raise the nursery faster so we have uh, found that true leaf emergence is faster by 20 to 25% and the technology was little, uh, little uh, uh, deviated from the basic uh, hydroponics it is aeroponics where we have uh, raised this nursery and leaf differentiation also was faster by 25 to 30% and uh, our core work that is ayurved pro green hydroponics technology for green fodder you can see that uh, it can be developed only in 7 days it it is a sprouts or microgreen for animals it contains higher nutrient val, uh, value Pal palatability is as high as 85% we have developed crop specific nutrient solution and it solves the problem of dairy farmers 
because it gives 365 days green fodder to their animal and after consuming this green fodder the milk yield increases by 15 to 20 percent and the uh, fertility level in, uh, level in heifer increases by 18 percent and it saves land because it's produced in vertical system i had cal calculated that one aph 1000 uh, which produces 1000 kg per day green fodder can save land up to one hectare in a year so no other system can create land but this system can save land for other uh, purpose and contribute to the food security and the, it doesn't require any artificial light so machines are available in different capacity Farmers are uh, taking that, institution are taking the machine, dairy cooperatives are taking. This is the research work be being mentioned in uh, NAS policy paper 85, where you can see the work of Ayurved is uh, being mentioned. This is some of our other initiative. The same machine can be used to grow a maize, oat, sorghum, barley. Now the question comes, why we talk about paddy or rice nursery? Because paddy or rice is producing greater than 140 million hectares worldwide. It is one of the most heavily consumed crop. And 90% is consumed in Asia. And requires very high water 3000 to 5000 liters per kg water is required and after harvesting stubble burning is now a very very big issue in uh, ncr it also emit 50 to 100 million tons of methane in a year disease infestation is there Transplanting is a very cumbersome process in uh, paddy nursery transplanting and it, it is monsoon dependent. So a possible solution which we have given to our farmers based in Haryana that uh, we have raised the nursery in just seven days and transplant it through mechanical transplanting. And we have covered 500 acres in Haryana in last five years. And we could find that maturity was 18 to 20 days earlier. Yield was also on a higher side because tillering was 25% uh, higher. Profuse tillering we could uh, observe in last uh, five years. It saves water, 1.5 lakh liters per acre. If you want to raise the nursery in a traditional method for one acre it requires at least 1.5 lakhs liters of water where in hydroponics only 21,000 uh, liters of water is required saves land because it is in vertical system so no land is required it helps in re reducing methane emission and uh, during nursery production no weedicide or pesticide is required Transplanting is easy because it is transplanting through mechanical transplanter. The farmer's response of this package, nursery plus mechanical transplanting, is enormous. They they were after us that um, in, in the season, in Kharif season, we should go and transplant the hydroponic nursery in their field. Because labor is a very big, big problem in a state like Haryana and Punjab. And now... The labor problem is uh, increasing day by day. So it reduces the labor requirement, reduces the diseases. And uh, what I have earlier mentioned about the mechanical transplanting. So that the question comes, how Ayurved Research Foundation can support in promoting technology in or any other activities related to hydroponics so we can facilitate the commercial hydroponics consultancy for hydroponics hydroponic paddy nursery water and soil testing uh, we are also doing soil enrichment program cultivation of medicinal planting with a buyback arrangement 
community development and improving animal health so integration of livestock and agriculture for sustainability is our mantra these are some of the machine installed at various government institute institution you can see raju was uh, west bengal then samastipur uh, another gau sampada department of west bengal and even in andaman and nicobar island so our machines are from leh to andaman so around 100 machine has been uh, installed in various part of country and uh, we have exported machines in bangladesh nepal and now one in dubai uh, this is just a glimpse that this technology is blessed by the icons like uh, dr apj abdul kalam dr ms swaminathan and this is the highest award which we could get on uh, developing this technology that is corporate environmental award which we got from terry by then president of india shrimati pratibha devi singh patel and this water digest award for water conservation technology so thank you हेलो थैंक यू डॉक्टर दीप्ति फॉर एक्सीलेंट प्रेजेंटेशन डॉक्टर शैलेंद्र जी आई रिक्वेस्ट यू टू मॉडरेट द टॉक थैंक यू सर ऑन द ईव ऑफ इंटरनेशनल वुमेन डे सो वी हैड एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ एक्सीलेंट प्रेजेंटेशन बाय डॉक्टर दीप्ति रे विद अ वेरी वेरी सिंपल uh <clears throat> i should say techniques which are having a uh, larger impact and particularly in going to be more important in uh, future then uh, about the ayurved research foundation he has uh, given the uh, all introductions details those are going to be imp uh, important because this is a journey how they uh, came up to this stage and what is the need of hydroponics and it is related with the climate change this has been very well introduced by her and uh, this initiative and future of hydroponics both are relatives uh, related with each other and uh, there are programs going on particularly for the hydroponics uh, of order and other uh, uh, products those are important and basically most important thing is the machines are available and ready made uh, modules are there they can uh, only give simple uh, guidelines and people can get start uh, producing it the advantages and capacities of the different models which have been developed by them it has been very well explained then my then the most important thing was microgreens and sprouts how those are different how the machines are available for the sprouts environmental parameters how to regulate them which are best for that and most important is the importance of high germination percentage which is required for getting the good uh, product then sprout growing machine uh, she has uh, shown to us and why it is important and why the sprouts are healthy for all of us and it is and microgreens as a super food has been explained and reasons and how it can be used in uh, uh, this uh, indian meals with a particularly our uh, some of the dishes may be added with it and beautifully it can be more made more it we can add the nutrition usage uh, part is important particularly if uh, uh, mostly the women start using it then it will be more promoted most important again uh, a concept of thyroid management through methi microgreen uh, was important and glim glimpses of the global microgreen requirement uh, that is uh, a good uh, summarization how it is going to be in, uh, a trade trade uh, value it has trade value and emphasizes who are the major players in microgreen and preferences of colored microgreens in india that is one of the reason uh, why it is that she has given its description so uh, what are what are the functions 
uh, how these are the uh, microgreens and sprouts uh, these are uh, important very well introduced to us and the demand of microgreens is increasing that has also been uh, given uh, narrated and examples have been given uh, one uh, few additional application of uh, nursery raising uh, were there but uh, i agree with all these application but uh, i don't know how the reddish nursery will be useful uh, but for other crops as the beautifully given for the example given for the paddy and it is being welcomed by the farmers that is uh, important and combining hydro uh, this uh, hydroponics with other cultural practices this is one of the example of this paddy and uh, this uh, part a stage can be uh, hydroponics and afterwards it can be utilized in the cultural, other cultural practices so we compliment her for uh, an excellent uh, uh, presentation you all were benefited and we uh, also enjoyed most of the new information which were presented by her thank you very much thank you dr shailendra uh, highlighting <coughs> the salient features of dr deepthi's uh, presentation uh, dr kalia would you like to add something uh, particularly the nutrition aspect of microgreen and sprouts okay sir thank you very much uh, i think uh, uh, very nice talk uh, because it's uh, Uh, but what i feel is that a lot of awareness uh, is needed amongst the society uh, because many people are not yet aware of uh, so it's good that uh, uh, through such webinars uh, we uh, create these lectures and invite people to uh, share their experiences uh, th that is what platform but uh, they have to carry on uh, this onslaught onslaught of uh, awareness creating program amongst the larger section of society so that uh, uh, the people enjoy the benefits of uh, this technology and uh, also the uh, of that of uh, nutritionally of uh, the micro uh, greens and uh, sprouts uh, uh, point of view and as also mentioned in some of the slides that uh, indians prefer uh, colored things so colored things are preferred because they are more nutritious so that's why i think indians have started understanding that uh, because of the literacy level increasing uh, has increased tremendously in the country and uh, people through a lot of uh, uh, the tv programs and other uh, programs through social media they are now listening that uh, the colored is healthy so and through this uh, system especially when we are uh, trying to uh, tell people that sprouts and microgreens are more healthy so it's better that we make use of uh, such uh, crops uh, which are uh, inherently healthy in these uh, nutrients and also educate people what those nutrients are and what is the bioavailability of those nutrients when we consume them as we say that uh, when we take microgreens and uh, these uh, uh, sprouts uh, these uh, nutrients are available in bioavailable form and they are in absorbable form and much more readily available compared to the fully grown uh, crops nutrients so th those things needs to be highlighted from that point of view and uh, uh, also that uh, the children should be educated because they look forwards for junk food they need to be educated that uh, uh, these are the healthy products that they should be consume and uh, the uh, parents should also be that they should encourage their children to go for these Uh, highlighting their nutrition level so that uh, they stay healthy and have high uh, immunity as uh, deepthi has already highlighted about that and uh, apart from that i think that the research is lot of research is required in this area uh, because uh, uh, all those aspects that the different crops uh, what is the requirement of different uh, different things Uh, so that uh, it becomes a foolproof technology in the future and there is a sort of package of practices developed so that every body i mean every layman also uh, try to use uh, its benefits uh, benefits to the fullest extent and also also as the machine has been mentioned uh, i i'm not aware of that can we bring out uh, the cost down of uh, machine by 
employing local vendors and as mostly uh, happens in india that uh, the our vendors are very smart developing local products uh, saying jugaad technology which is quite uh, uh, i mean uh, economic for the common man to use it so uh, those os- aspects also needs to be uh, ventured upon for the future i think we have had uh, a good talk and uh, it's a good future uh, as uh, the ayurved is uh, um, spreading its limbs uh, uh, on every side on different types of crops to make it uh, uh, productive and uh, profitable uh, for the future for different sectors so, so with that i thank the speaker very much for the nice talk thank you very much thank you dr kolia uh, <clears throat> can we have questions if any okay. kindly display the question first question dr hari har ram what is estimated market size of microgreens in india if you have any idea uh, dr yes. uh, dipti sir uh, the market is still emerging so yes. global level i could get the market size in million dollars 1 to 4 6 million uh, us million dollars but india still no figure is available on uh, the market size of microgreens what is your own estimate thinking guess uh, something that what dr harihar ram wants to know your mind uh, sir this market is emerging there are some entrepreneur who are doing so in coming time like because after covid everybody is uh, concerned about health and immunity so it will uh, increase around 2 millions in next 2 to uh, dollars in 2 to 3 years anyway i think harihar ram must have been your guru i don't know yes, <coughs> our colleague there at pantanagar's both of you can discuss uh, yes, then h- how much area is covered through hydroponic nursery and mechanical transplanting in rice as on date that's also from dr harihar ram your favorite subject uh, paddy uh, sir as far as uh, our work is concerned we have covered 500 acres in sonipat and panipat uh through hydroponic nursery and mechanical transplanting and uh, this te- technology is also emerging so in coming years we uh, intend to do 1000 acre by next year through hydroponics and mechanical transplanting sir is yes, good people started using that one yes sir oh, oh. next one no more questions okay only two questions were there so i think we Ah yes, Sir, yes, yes. One uh, one point I forgot, which she mentioned about okay. the medicinal plants uh, buyback uh, things that they have instead, which is very good. It will encourage uh, contract farming. It can be. I mean, they can themselves create a uh, market. That market needs to be created. I and mean, the questions like people ask that, what is the market when things have not yet started? Where is the market? You have to create market by creating awareness. so the, these are the way that uh, i mean people do not uh, let the things emerge from the ground they do not let them take uh, place but they before that they start uh, uh, putting uh, such question that uh, nip the evil in the bud so that, that's not thing it's a new area it's it has to be i mean you have to create the things uh, that's yes, why awareness it will require a lot of so, time good so good new thing uh, oh, yes, yes sir we are thing. encouraging farmers to take uh, cultivation of medicinal plants and because market is not available uh, for them so we had uh, given this opportunity to them that we will buy back whatever okay, okay. they are producing oh yes good good uh, this is one I question will, from uh, dr gaur uh, uh, dr gaur dr gaur sir has asked you very practical hmm. question what is the optimum age at which micro greens should be harvested for consumption i mean he is elaborating it when is the peak nutrient level reached hmm. very pertinent sir, question yes sir sir we have done uh, with weed grass we hmm. have optimized it and we have a research paper on this where uh, the antioxidant activities and all other activities were uh, like uh, through lab we have uh, quantify it so on the seventh day the peak nutrition was there so in microgreen uh, case also i 7 uh, uh, to 8 they will have the optimum uh, nutrient level 
Okay, uh, if uh, Deepthi you permit, uh, let yes. me supplement it. Uh, Gaur sir, uh, general uh, thumb rule in microgreens is two leaf stage. Two leaf stage may not be applicable to all, but generally two leaf stage. You know, first we get the cotyledony leaves and after that we get the true leaves. So two true leaves. That is the ideal stage to consume or harvest. Uh, right, any sir. other question? Or koi shawal yadi nahi hai, to I think uh, <coughs> uh, Dr. Deepti and Dr. Shailen Rajan and Dr. Kalia, all the three together have put up a nice show on hydroponics. The idea of BSHF uh, to highlight hydroponic is that uh, the soil less production uh, in urban areas is inevitable. It has to come. In other countries, it is making a presence. And uh, Singapore, I think we had a talk where the speaker clearly told that Singapore has got a target to produce 30% of its vegetables, whether they are green or something else, uh, locally. And Singapore doesn't have the land to produce it. So everything soilless means in hydroponics. So the technology is of the future. And uh, uh, Ayurved uh, started working on hydroponic long, long back. The other crops, or the scope of other crops appear later, at least in India. Uh, but in India, they are working. So their expertise is to be used to just modify whatever technology they have developed to suit to the other crops. And a major crop, which uh, I think uh, Dr. Hariram was right to put up the question uh, about the paddy, a staple food crop, and where uh, such things are required and production of the nursery, one of the important activity and further transplanting it mechanically. So both, both the problem they are uh, tackling Ayurveda uh, people. So good one, the others should take a lesson and uh, jump over the opportunities because they have shown that there is a possibility of doing it. And uh, without that, I, I don't think we will be able to uh, take the paddy cultivation in such a large scale without adopting the new technologies. So the hydroponics are the futuristic technologies, but at the same time, everything has got the negative aspect also. Uh, hydroponic uh, this year are microgreens. Microgreens uh, time and again, we are talking in this talk because the talk is on microgreens. But uh, I was anticipating that there will be some question on that, but it's not there. The, the, the quantity of seed required for microgreens um, greens is, uh, I think, awesome, tremendous. You require a huge quantity of seed and seed production is not easy. Seed production is expensive. So uh, that is why I think somewhere she mentioned for 80 to 100 grams, some 100 rupees, something like that. So such a costly thing will be unaffordable for the common man in the country. So we have to work out the ways and means or the technology has to be developed to harness this potential. Uh, and how to just uh, see that load on the seed production is minimized. I don't know, uh, but I have got a uh, funny idea. Uh, you know, somato embryogenesis. Somato embryogenesis, where we uh, have got the somatic embryos, and with that, you can have the seedlings. So that thing, the scientists, this is point is for the scientists, see that and a person like Dr. Kalia can see in that uh, the um, micro green multiplied by somato embryogenesis and the micro green multiplied by seed. What is the nutrition status? And if nutrition status is different, from where that nutrition is appearing in the micro green uh, grown uh, through seeds. 
uh, I'm wondering on that. So somebody can take up the um, the, the, the project or if already somebody has worked out, some uh, we can be educated on that. Somebody can have a correspondence on that. But uh, this aspect is very important. The nutrition for which we are just uh, saying that nutrition. And the another aspect, uh, uh, Dr. Kalia, I think you are there on the nutrition uh, side, is not only the nutrition per se, the bioavailability of that nutri nutri nutrient is important. So wherever we are having the um, uh, nutrient contents as increased, does not mean it will be available to the um, uh, consumer. Uh, what is the bioavailability of that? So if the bioavailability is better even with less nutrient content, uh, one has to think over. So uh, these aspects uh, are required. Our main job, BSS's main job is to stimulate the thinking and disseminate the knowledge. That's what uh, we are doing. And uh, I think uh, uh, the interest has been shown by the people. That's a good one. It's an encouragement to that. So with this... Uh, Words, I once again thank uh, uh, Deep, Dr. Deepthi Rai uh, to speak on important topic, uh, that too on International Women's Day. Congratulations, Dr. Uh, Deepthi Rai. And uh, it's a, uh, I think favor to us also that you <coughs> accepted our request uh, on such an auspicious or important uh, uh, day, International Women's Day. Uh, day and I'm thankful to him for nicely uh, <coughs> moderating the talk and supplementing it and making it uh, much more palatable than the microgreens uh, by giving lot many information uh, both uh, Dr. Shalain Rajan and Dr. Kalia. Thank you, so sir. I think uh, for um, this evening only that much. Uh, next Tuesday uh, we have requested Dr. Uh, 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 Dr. Kalia to speak on Nutra Cuticles Vegetable Health Benefits. Nutra Cuticle Vegetable Health Benefit. I told you that he is a nutrient, nutrition guy. Rightly, I was pointing out. So, our uh, co organizer is a nutrition person and nutrition from uh, vegetables. That's what he is going to talk about and that is for health purposes and uh, <clears throat> in relation to urban, urban vegetable production or whatever we say the urban farming. So friends we meet next Tuesday same time 7 p.m. till then goodbye and thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night.